Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So, you know that saying, like a kid in a candy store? Well, that is me right now. I am at a place that I've wanted to come since I was 10 years old. This is the Narciss Snake Dens. You know, we've all seen the side of the U-Haul truck with the garter snakes. Well, that is where I'm at right now in South Central Manitoba. Literally tens of thousands of garter snakes communally hibernate in these bluffs behind me. And this time of year, they're all coming out of hibernation at the same time, which makes this place the largest gathering of snakes anywhere in the world. This is gonna be the most amazing reptile adventure of my life. I'm Dave Kaufman, and I tour the world to see how reptiles are living in the wild. And while I'm at it, checking out some of the most amazing facilities and reptile expos as well. It's all about learning, appreciation, and conservation. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. Here we go. I am so excited to get down here and see these snakes. I cannot remember the last time I was this excited about anything. Maybe the last Star Wars film, and I hope that I'm not gonna leave this place as disappointed as I was with the last Star Wars film. It's really cold out here today. It's like 50, which is about nine or 10 degrees Celsius, and it's really windy but there's not a cloud in the sky. It's really sunny and that's heating up this ground. And even though it's this cold and windy out here, I think we're actually hitting this perfectly. Look at them. Oh my God. There's probably 50 of them right in here. Look at this. I have to watch where I walk because there's so many snakes here. There are just snakes everywhere. Literally thousands of red-sided garter snakes everywhere. Look at them all. One there, 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 there. Over here is a, oh, this is a breeding ball. So as soon as the snakes emerge from hibernation, that's what they're gonna do right there. They're going to breed and they're going to form what's called a mating ball. And that's where multiple males try to mate with a single female. And there's a lot of competition for those males to get with that female. It's kind of like any club in any college town. But what a few males will actually do is they will replicate the female's pheromones and lead all the males away from that female and then slip out of that fake mating ball, go back and mate with the female uncontested while the rest of the males are wondering what happened to the female. That's actually a very smart strategy so that it's your genes that pass on to the next generation. So this mating ritual lasts for about a three week period in late April to early May, depending on the weather conditions. So what's happening is the male snakes are usually the first to surface and they wait patiently for females to come out. And as those females come out, the males are waiting an ambush for them. And as soon as those females emerge, the big Canadian garter snake orgy begins. All right, so we've got a black and yellow striped snake there, a black and yellow striped snake there, and this is a brown chicken brown cow. So this big one right here is the female, and all these smaller ones are males, and they're all trying to get with her. So look at this, guys. That's one huge breeding ball. And then you come up here, and there's another breeding ball here. Go around this bush. And there's another breeding ball there. You got a breeding ball here, here, here. And then I'm literally, look at this. I'm surrounded by all these males coming in to the breeding ball here. I literally am surrounded by hundreds of snakes right now. Let me tell you something, Rattlers. This is a nightmare for a lot of people. I don't understand how, but to me, this is an absolute dream come true. I am literally standing surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of snakes. So these snakes are only going to be active from this time till about mid-September. Here in Canada, the summers are very short, and as such, these garter snakes have a very short active period, and therefore, they don't grow as big as garter snakes do elsewhere in the world. So look at this female right here. That's a pretty big female, but because the summer months and therefore the growing season of these snakes is so short here in Manitoba, that's about a 10-year-old snake right there. And in warmer climates, that snake would be so much bigger for being 10 years old. And the odds for a female snake in this environment with such a 
short growing season, the odds for a snake to reach the tender age of 10 to 12 years old is about one in 5,000. So as soon as this snake orgy is done, the females will disperse and leave this area first. And for some reason, the males are gonna hang around this area a lot longer than the females do. Nobody's really sure why. But then something turns them off and they disperse into the forests and the wetlands along with the females who left this area again much earlier than the males do. So why are the garter snakes coming to this location to hibernate year after year after year in these communal hibernation dens? Well, it has everything to do with the location and not really the snakes themselves. Manitoba is flat, it's farmland, it's prairie. There's not a lot of really good places for snakes to hibernate in this environment and so with limestone bluffs like these, this is the only place where it gets deep enough underground so that the snakes can withstand those really harsh cold winters that Canada has. So these cracks in the limestone are really the only place that garter snakes in this area have to hibernate. And that's why they are all communally hibernating. Now, these underground fissions that they are hibernating in is only about the size of the average bedroom in your house. And therefore, tens of thousands of garter snakes are are spending the entire winter in a space that small. Canada, as we all know, gets really cold. It can get up to 50 degrees below zero Fahrenheit here in the winter. So this is the only place that those snakes can get below that really deep frost layer to survive the winters here. So how do they find this place every year? Well, as we know, snakes follow a super highway of scent trails, and it doesn't matter how much it snows on those trails or rains on those trails, their tongues are so sensitive that they can pick up that scent trail. And from these communal hibernation dens, there are tons of super highway scent trails that take the snakes away from this hibernaculum and then bring them back here in the fall so that they can always find where they hibernated the year before. And that's what makes these hibernaculums here in Manitoba so important. And that's why a lot of these hibernaculums are actually fenced off so that people can sit and enjoy and learn about the snakes, but that they don't get into the hibernaculums themselves and wind up destroying them. Look at this, families come from all over the world to be here just to see these snakes and learn about these snakes and appreciate these snakes. You get to meet people from all over the world. There are people that came from Australia, from England, from Indonesia, just to come see this. Oh yeah, no this is... <laughs> Like, really? Well, this is a phenomenon that is unique in the world to yeah. this area right here. And in a place that's frozen eight months out of the year, it's quite fantastic and amazing. All right, so this is Steve Rempel. He, what, what did we meet? We met two years ago at the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo in Toronto, and you said, if I ever get to Manitoba, contact you, and you're going to show me something that I've wanted to see since I was a kid. Yeah. So. You live right in Winnipeg, about an hour and a half south of here, and yep. you get to come out here and film these guys every year. Definitely, it's awesome. How, yeah, I mean, how awesome is that? The funniest thing I find is that we're frozen almost eight months out of the year. Right. And we have the largest gathering of snakes anywhere in the world. Just in, like an hour and a half outside the city. Almost right in your own backyard, you get to come Pretty see much. this. So you've got the red-sided garter snake, which these are. You've the got, side, yeah. right, you've got the radix, which is the plains garter snakes. You've got red bellies, and you've got uh, smooth green snakes. And that's all the snake species that you have in southern Manitoba. In except for, well, in this western, area. In this area, yes. But yes. In, we have the western hognose. Uh, hour and a half just west of Winnipeg is where you find that western hognose, as well as the purse kink. So you don't have a lot of snake species here in Manitoba. No. But you've got this, and somehow... Quantity over quality? Uh, right, somehow you win. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're amazing. People always want the big and the baddest, but like, this is amazing. Yeah, this is truly amazing. And so you run Prairie Exotics here in Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah, we do education. So I take in people's unwanted pets. We do the rescue and rehome them as needed. And then I do education at schools, daycares, birthdays, all the fairs and stuff like that, taking in... Uh, people like letting them know about our local species and yep. helping them enjoy them out in the wild But then also what's available as far as pets and which ones might make good pets and ones that are not so great 
So by about the year 2000, it was estimated that about half the population of these garter snakes completely disappeared. And most of them were killed on this highway here. So what the community did was they got together with the Canadian government and they built these tunnels under the road, but it wasn't just enough to have the tunnels. The snakes wouldn't find them, they wouldn't use them. So what they did was they made these drift fences that go about a kilometer that way and about a kilometer behind me, right by the den site here where the snakes were migrating the most. And what that does is it funnels the snakes off of the road. They follow this drift fence right into the funnel and right into the tunnel and it absolutely worked and today the garter snake population is almost where it was on historical levels which is a success story that you just don't hear a lot when it comes to snake populations snake and reptile and uh, amphibian populations they're declining at an alarming rate but because the people here care so much about their snakes and so much about protecting these snakes that the population is extremely stable and now there's an estimated 70,000 garter snakes that hibernate and live right in this area. You know, I gotta tell you, for those of us out there that are working so hard to get people who don't like snakes to quit killing them and to at least leave them alone if not appreciate them, you know, that fight is kind of like shoveling a turd against the tide. It really is, but when you see a local community care so much about the snakes like this, Man, there is very little else in the world that is as satisfying as seeing the work that goes in to protecting these snake populations here. So this is Miss Mallory Lindsay, and she's joining us in the field today. And it's been awesome being up here with you. So this is your first time not only to Canada, but to this location. Yeah, and the first time actually seeing garter snakes. Uh, I couldn't, I, I couldn't believe it. But it's so even if someone is terrified of snakes, you have to come here because I am the epitome of fear to fascination. I was scared of everything, <laughs> and to come here and see them just coming on you, they're so curious. I've never seen a more curious reptile. They're harmless, they're inquisitive, and it's just so amazing being able to really be engulfed in this kind of environment. I mean, just, it's so much fun. It really is, and they are so inquisitive. I mean, we're sitting there filming them, and they're coming up and checking out our cameras, they're checking who we are. They, they show no fear of us. And this is such, an, uh, just being able to see nature at its raw awesomeness, I mean, this isn't captive, there's no graphics, right. there's no special effects. This is true nature at her best. Exactly uh, everyone right. Everyone needs to really see this. Exactly right. Well, you have a YouTube channel. Miss Mallory Adventures, come see me on Instagram too. I have quizzes, I have um, basically anything that you want to know about the creepy, crawly, scary, weird, gross things. Come see me. Awesome. Rattlers, I gotta tell you, ever since I caught my first garter snake when I was nine years old, and it set me off on this lifelong fascination, this obsession with reptiles, I've always said that no matter where I travel in the world, and no matter how many cool reptiles I find, if I lose that fascination at seeing a garter snake in the wild, I'm done. I'm just done. I will never lose that childlike fascination that I had when I was nine years old and found that first garter snake. I have found hundreds, now thousands, of garter snakes since then. And every garter snake that I see in the wild, it brings me right back to that feeling of wonderment that I had when I was a kid. And so again, being here and seeing thousands of garter snakes, this is an absolute dream come true. Just look at this really awesome little Canadian red-sided garter snake. And one of the things that I'm geeking out about these garter snakes is they've got black bellies. All the red-sided garter snakes that we see in Minnesota or elsewhere, they have silver bellies. These guys have black bellies. I don't know, anybody else geeking out about that but me? I kind of geek out about things like that. So I just want to thank Steve so much for bringing me up here and making a childhood dream of mine come true. And it was really awesome to be out here in the field with Mallory as well, checking out thousands upon thousands of red-sided garter snakes up here. And as always, until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.